I feel like any opportunity to to let people know what's really happening on the southern border of the United States is one I want to take. Um, there's so many misrepresentations. There's so many myths. There's so many uh, so much fake news, I guess. <laughs> um, and um, I want to qualify what I'm saying uh, first by saying I'm not a fronteriza. I don't live on the border. I'm not um, as qualified to speak on this issue as many, many other people. But I do have some experience, personal experience, and I'm happy always to share that because the more people um, can counteract this false narrative about what the what's happening on the U.S. border, the better. Um, I started travel. Well, my first trip. Well, okay, let's go back. Let's go back <laughs> to the beginning. Um, I traveled a bunch when I was a kid, so I love to travel. Um, I grew up traveling, and then traveled only you know after as you know, backpacked around India and Nepal and Thailand and everywhere when I was um, young. And once I moved to Texas, I continued to like to travel and camp and backpack. And so I fell in love with the Big Band area. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, volunteered for a while working on the trails in the Big Band National Park. So that's a part of the Texas-Mexico um, border that is incredibly rugged, incredibly beautiful. Um, there are cliffs on either side of the Rio Grande River that make it in many places, really impossible for someone to cross there. It's very remote. Um, as far as I know, there's no proposal to build any kind of wall, um, like in Santa Elena Canyon or anything. <laughs> but you never know what they'll come I up with. I was going to say, next. I would not put it past, put it past right. anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So These that days. was my initial uh, love affair with the border. And then um, in... 2017, I heard about a Sierra Club trip to a place called Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge, and I learned that the Trump administration was planning uh, to build a border wall in that across that National Wildlife Refuge. And as a lover of the state park system, the national park system, as a camper, hiker, kayaker, I was really disturbed by this. And so I decided to go with a Sierra Club trip. It was my birthday weekend, and um, I guess my birthday in 2017. And um, for people who don't know, this, 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 the part of South Texas that all the first border wall construction is planned for is the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and that part of Texas is very different from, for example, Big Bend. Texas is huge. It's like mm -hmm. a country. It's bigger mm -hmm. than a lot of countries. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. And the geography is so varied. And the Rio Grande Valley is um, very uh, almost like subtropical. And the uh, mm. Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge is old growth forest. And it's right on the Rio Grande River. So, you, you know, you look across the river and there's Mexico. I mean, all across the Texas-Mexico border is a river that you, if you want to right. cross, you have to swim the river. And nowadays, in some places, there are actually alligators in that river because yeah. they've swum up from the Gulf. So it's not right. getting across, even getting across the river is not an easy prospect. Um, anyway, I... Um, there was a planned protest of the the plan to build the border wall in Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge. And what I saw when I attended that event um, was a community of people who loved that place. And the, the whole thing, the whole event started... Um, <laughs> I know this is like the atheist community of Austin, but it did start. <laughs> the, the event was started and was led by a priest at La Lomita, or at, at uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe, I think, church in Mission, Texas. And this guy is a total character, Roy, uh, Father Roy. And the procession starts. He's got this blue Pinto station wagon, dogs coming out every window, like dog <laughs> heads coming out every yeah. window, a giant statue of the Virgin Mary. And playing like Willie Nelson and <laughs> all 
this crazy music <laughs> from these loudspeakers and just leading the people. And we marched that day for at least a mile to this place called La Lomita Chapel. And I just met a bunch of different, really amazing, diverse people. Um, there's a, a group of Native Americans, uh, the Carrizo Kamikudo. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that name. They are heavily involved with the fight against the border wall in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, there were people of all ages. There was a woman, um, an elderly woman, walking the entire way with a walker wow. with two mm, bright green tennis balls <laughs> on the front of the walker. She pushed yeah. that walker the whole way. Um, there were children. There were uh, just every kind of people, Latino, Latina, white, black, indigenous people, everybody. And it would all join together people who looked like um, they would be Republicans or they would be in favor of the border wall, but they were not. And they understand how this is going to impact their community. And I was just really touched by that. Um, and then there was another event the following day at the National Wildlife Refuge. Um, the border wall was planned to be built on the levee. There's a levee, an earthen levee, that is designed to control flooding um, from the Rio Grande River. And so in many parts of Hidalgo County in South Texas, the plan is to build the wall on top of the levee. Um, and so all these people, and it's a huge, uh, Santa National, National Wildlife Refuge is a huge birding uh, mecca. People come from actually all over the world mm -hmm. because bird species from Central America, um, like the yellow, or gold, I think they're called golden orb weavers. They weave like a basket mm -hmm. yeah. nest mm -hmm. sure. and green jays and other things. That's They come that far north, but that's the only place, place in the United States you can see them. So people come from everywhere, and um, there was this line of people all along the levee, all holding hands mm -hmm. um, in solidarity against the border wall. <laughs> I have to add that it was very hard to get the people to hold their hand, to hold hands, which is an American thing. Like, oh. Americans do mm. not want to hold each other's hands, especially the dudes who are like, I got to hold this guy's hand. <laughs> but we'd, everybody held hands, and it was just really um, moving experience, profound experience the whole weekend. And that sort of launched me into the activism um, against the border wall and in favor of sane immigration policies. So didn't you draft what did you I remember that you drafted a policy or I drafted the resolution against the border wall and in favor of comprehensive immigration reform that was passed by the city of Austin. She drafted that, y'all. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Well, it was it was it was a really enjoyable task. I loved yeah. it. I loved doing research and learning and um I was asked by the Texas branch of the Sierra Club to draft the resolution, and then um, Council Member Greg Cesar's office was really instrumental in helping to get that resolution passed. And then um, cities around Texas, there are many cities around Texas who have passed similar resolutions, um, kind of, uh, we helped one another, you know, we mm -hmm. talked and like uh, shared ideas, yeah. So a lot of cities and local governments are standing up against the policies yeah. of the Trump administration. So we've got this flip mm -hmm. where um, the Republicans are now against local control. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Have a flip on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I just talked a bunch. I'm so sorry. No, no that's no, what we're no, here no. for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're going to take a commercial break here because I forgot to do a couple things at the beginning. Sorry, gang. Uh, we are having a, a concert here. Uh, Mark, are you ready to cue that up because I screwed up when it should be done? But uh, the intro music and outro music for this show and also the Atheist Experience are done by a woman named Shelly Siegel. And she purposely pronounces her name Siegel. Uh, and she's going to be in concert here on Valentine's Day. So, Mark, are you Make ready to this roll this Valentine's that puppy? Day one to remember. It's time <laughs> to get sexy. 
live in Austin, Texas. An intimate performance by recording artist Shelley Siegel follows a live taping of Secular Sexuality. Food is included and drinks will be available for purchase. Get your tickets now by going to eventbrite.com and search for Secular Sexuality. That's eventbrite.com. Search Secular Sexuality. It's going to be awesome. I think Editrix would like that. Editrix would like that. <laughs> yeah. Right on. She should come and see. Okay, so that also gave me a chance to grab Annie's bio. All righty. Annie ba- uh, Hartnett is a mother dancer, writer, and editor. And sh- and that's the other thing. She's an amazing dancer and choreographer. Um, every Christmas, my daughter and I would go see her group dance, and it was actually our favorite Christmas thing to do. And she stopped doing it, so we're sad now. Uh, she is editorial director of Why Are You Marching, Texas? There's a Facebook group for it, and it's amazing. It's got all sorts of um, activism and things that you can help with. A project that documents activism in her home state. Following a trip to Santa Ana National Wildlife Refuge, she joined the Sierra Club Borderlands team, drafted a resolution against the border wall passed by the city of Austin in October 2017. See, I did remember that and traveled to Washington, D.C. to lobby for comprehensive immigration reform. And we have a wonderful picture of her in Washington, D.C. Can you put that photo up while I'm talking, maybe? Uh, And uh, against militarization of our southern border. She is also an active member of the Collective of Lady Arm Wrestlers. wrestlers. So I think we've covered all of those things. We just... uh, didn't get the introduction like we wanted to. Also, would you please click click that subscribe button no matter what medium you're watching us on because we think we're worth, worth being subscribed to. <laughs> <laughs> so, all righty, back, back to the show. <laughs> now that I did that. Um, so you uh, had some specific experiences that you told me about on the border that were just amazing. Um, folks want asylum we all know about that and at least for me the perception is that nobody ever gets in you get stuck in court and you're stuck there forever but that's not true and annie's the one that told me about this so if you could talk about the work that is being done and how you got involved and how you can get involved Hmm. i just know about a tiny piece of this but i'm tiny piece is great talk about it Mm -hmm. um so uh, well, there, there are a couple of things. The, the Trump administration is trying very hard, in my opinion, to make America white again. Um, and one yes. of the ways they're trying to do that is by curbing immigration from uh, Central America, from Latin America, um, from everywhere, actually, but unless unless like it's Sweden or Switzerland, I'm sure they'd be Are happy to have people from Norway white. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> I was going to say the DHS and would, had no idea. Yeah, and yeah. would they want to come here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. um, anyway, one of the ways that they're doing this, well, that of course the border wall is part of that effort to stop people from crossing. Although I will tell you right now, it does nothing. Well, it may be do something, but it does very little to actually stop people from crossing. The wall itself. The wall itself. Yeah. So there is already wall built in every state in the United States. So all the border states, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, all of them have wall. Um, that wall was funded under George W. Bush, and it was most of it was constructed under the Obama administration. Um it's different. There are different kinds of wall. Um, there, it's some of it's fencing. Um, some of it's just vehicle barriers. <clears throat> but you can go if you would like to um, to South Texas and see some of this wall. Um, and I did that. And um, this is. I'm just going to tell a story, and okay. then I'll get back to what sure. we were supposed to talk about. Okay, it's reform. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so in one of my previous trips to the border, I wanted to see the wall, and what mm-hmm. it looks like, and um, just get a feeling for what's there. So um, my friend Scott Nickel, who is uh, 
incredibly knowledgeable activist with the uh, Borderlands team, the Lower Rio Grande Valley Sierra Club, is actually writing a book about the border wall. Um, he knows everything <laughs> about it, I think. He brought me down to the... Oh, sorry. Uh, he brought me down to see the wall. And while we were down there, we were walking um, on U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, property. And there it was a walking trail. It was a birding trail. It was marked, uh, labeled as such. Um, we were approached by first one Border Patrol agent who, who told us we weren't allowed to walk there. And then a second Border Patrol agent, senior to the first one, drove, followed us down the trail. Um, it was a, you can see that trail, uh, the picture. It's like you can drive on that trail. He drove up in his truck and um, said, you, you know, you, you can't walk here. Mm-hmm. And we said, well, yes, we can. And um, he said, well, no, you can't. <laughs> and, um, and eventually, well, I actually started filming him. And he said, oh, please don't put my video on Facebook. <laughs> and, I, and, um, and then we just got to, got to talk. Please to don't him. do things that would make you not want your video yeah. on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we got to talking, and we and he said, "Well, if you want to see a little further down, there's a stack of ladders. We find them all the time. And actually, at the old Hidalgo Pump House, there's a whole pavilion. It's a it's a kind of a public place. There's a pavilion that they built out of ladders that they had found along the border wall. And they're also wow. like, if you look closely, there are finger and footprints all over the steel." whatever they are, slats. Yeah. Um, people climb over the wall. They tunnel <laughs> under it. They, they fly <laughs> over it. They, they take a boat They around. mostly <laughs> come through the ports of entry. And so that yeah. leads into my next story, which is what you asked about. Yes. Um, so the ports of entry, a lot of them in South Texas anyway, are there's a bridge that goes from Mexico to the United States and across it goes over the Rio Grande River. And um, Border Patrol, I think maybe as much as a year ago, maybe just six months ago, um, they started setting up uh, kind of blockades in the middle of the bridge to keep people from getting to the U.S. or to, it's called metering. And it's not really legal because, so international, by international law, anyone can seek asylum in the United States but they must ask a request for asylum on U.S. soil. So in order to request asylum, they have to get to the U.S. And so people, a lot of times people are talking about illegals crossing, illegals, um, which I don't think any human being should be referred to as an illegal. But anyway, crossing um, illegally, people crossing illegally, well, actually a lot of those people are legally seeking asylum. That's the process. Right. Yep. But um, the Border Patrol agents have set up sort of a roadblock in the middle of the bridge. So now we have a situation in South Texas on many of the bridges where people don't want to lose their place. These asylum seekers from Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, they don't want to lose their place in line because they're Border Patrol is only letting a few people through every day. So they camp out on these bridges. And they camp mm-hmm. out for sometimes weeks at a time with young children in all weather. Um, and there are groups of people now in the U.S. who are helping the, uh, the, the asylum seekers who are camped on the bridges. So one of the recent interviews I did um, for Why Are You Marching Texas with a, was with a woman who was involved in an organization called Team Brownsville. You can look them up. Um, they are providing hot meals to the asylum seekers on the bridges every day. So they have kitchens set up. This is completely grassroots. Like this is in somebody's kitchen of their home. They're build. They're 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 making food. They're loading it on a wagon, a little red wagon. They're walking across the border, pulling their little red wagon, and they're feeding people. Um, uh, the woman's name that I interviewed is Gabby Zavala. Uh, the organization is Team Brownsville. It's just all volunteer. Um, you can donate to them. 
Um, if you Google Team Brownsville or, uh, you know, Asylum Seekers, I'm sure you can find it. Um, so what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> you had an amazing experience there. You you told me about you just walked in and said can i help oh yes yeah. so so that's one way so t- mm-hmm. the 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 folks helping people on the bridges that's one way that that um texans and other and people in other states as well are helping asylum seekers in mcallen texas which is in the rio grande valley um it's been called the epicenter of the the border crisis um, and that's the place that I normally go when I visit the border because I have friends there now. Um, and so even though the administration is trying to keep people from crossing, Border Patrol does let people through, and they are processed by U.S. Immigration Services. And so if somebody has a credible case for asylum, they have been... Uh, you know, beaten, threatened with violence. Um, the stories, victims of domestic abuse, but it has to be really bad because that's not really even any, a, a reason to be able to seek asylum anymore. But anyway, some people are let through. And what the Border Patrol has been doing for years is just kind of dumping those people at the Greyhound bus station to make their way further into the interior of the United States. And the people, these people have walked for thousands of miles or traveled for thousands of miles. They have nothing. Um, And so various organizations have set up um, processes to help them. And when I was in McAllen last, I learned of a respite center run by Catholic Charities. Um, There is a nun, Sister, I think her name is Sister... Norma Pimentel, Um, she sort of is the overseer of this organization, this respite center, and they go to the, they go to the Greyhound station, they bring people to the respite center, which is not fancy, it's in an old nursing home, they're just like cobbling it together. Um, People can sleep on some mats, they can take a shower, and they get a meal. And they get a little, oftentimes they'll get a little care package that they can take with them on the bus to wherever they're going, North Carolina, where they have relatives. Or Are they even given money to use for the bus, or is that something? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I'm sure that there are organizations. Yeah, I think Races Texas, which is another fabulous organization that you can support if you want to help people seek, seeking asylum and immigrants and people facing deportation. Um, Races, R-A-I-C-E-S, Texas, has been amazing at providing legal services, um, providing bus tickets. Mm -hmm. They provide bus tickets. They Mm -hmm. go with people to the bus stations and help them navigate to figure out how to get on a bus because most people, they they don't speak English or sometimes they don't speak Spanish either. Mm -hmm. They speak uh, an indigenous language. Mm -hmm. Um, Another great organization to support is the Texas Civil Rights Project. Mm -hmm. They are doing incredible work um, on the border, uh, representing landowners whose property is being seized by an eminent domain, representing people seeking asylum, um, defending the rights of people who are detained already in uh, detention facilities. So when I went to the Catholic Charities Respite Center, I had a hard time finding it. There's not there's not a big sign, you know. It's not it's not fancy. There's no sign. You have to know where it is. I went there and I just said, "Can I help?" They didn't know me from Adam and they said, "Come on in. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go down there and help sort clothes." And so I ended up working with a woman um who is a a uh, winter Texan from Nebraska, I think Nebraska. Um, and she volunteers there all the time. And we were sorting clothes uh, for children. And then the families would bring the mother, usually just a mother or a father, would bring their children into the room to get clothes to wear north because it was cold. And it was even colder in Chicago and North Carolina and the places. These, So we've got kids. One little girl was barefoot. Um I'd say she was about four. Um, 
I was trying to help her put on a shoe, find shoes to fit her. And she kept, like, crying a little bit, you know. And we finally figured out she had this huge sore on the bottom of her foot. From walking. From walking. And so there's a clinic at the respite center. She she was taken. The woman from uh, the Winter Texan took her to the clinic where she got some first aid. Um, so... It's also possible to provide financial support to this organization, Catholic Charities in the Rio Grande Valley. They are, I believe, doing good work based on, you know, what I saw there. Um, it was all volunteers, men and women, um, just helping their neighbor, mm-hmm. feeding people, giving them clothes. They need, they need winter clothes. There was a real shortage of winter clothes for children. We had to turn kids away like we don't have a coat for your daughter we don't have we don't have any more you know everybody wanted a warm hat you Mm -hmm. know we didn't have many hats um the kids were all ages um it was just pretty heartbreaking actually there were several of the the mothers and fathers just looked so tired And even some of the children just looked so tired and beaten down and hungry and cold. And, you know, just, Mm -hmm. it was heartbreaking, really. And those people don't, those people will, they've been given a court date, so they'll have to return and plead their case in immigration court. Now, the problem with that is, is that there aren't enough attorneys to help them they may or may not be able to speak for themselves Mm -hmm. Um, if they don't speak Spanish there are more Spanish English language interpreters but there are very few interpreters who can help the Maya people from Guatemala who speak various languages so that's another way the administration is keeping people from um, becoming a natu- or becoming, you know, get being granted asylum. So it's just a series of roadblocks. But there are ways that you <laughs> and me can help. You know, we just and I really recommend that people just go to down to the border. It's beautiful. There's so many things of cultural interest. There's you know, be- natural beauty. And just see for yourself. <laughs> well, Don't? It, if nothing else, it allows people to see for themselves why this whole idea of a border wall is it's absurd. Crazy. Yes. It's absolutely absurd. Because for one thing, I mean, you are walking on a birding trail, yeah. and we're told by Customs and Border Patrol that you weren't allowed to walk there. So let's think about that for a minute. <laughs> U.S. citizen walking in the United States is confronted by a Customs and Border Patrol officer and told, you're not allowed to walk on this birding trail in what is actually a public yes, it's public, public land, land. <laughs> because there's a wall right there. So think about that for a minute. And that's another issue with this wall thing, because in some situations, because of the geography there, we would actually have to construct that wall about two miles into yes. U.S. territory, which is basically conceding two miles of U.S. territory to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Because well, is Customs and Border Patrol going to go patrol on the other side of the wall and say, mm-hmm. oh, no, 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 the, the river is the barrier? Mm-hmm. Well, in that case, just let the river be the barrier. Mm-hmm. 